All electronic components can be broadly divided into two categories, active components and passive components. These components are diagonally different from each other based on their functional characteristics and performance. In this video, we will learn about the types of active and passive components, and we will also discuss the difference between active and passive devices. But before understanding how they differ from each other, it's important to know what each component means and how it works. One key factor that differentiates types of electronic components from each other is whether they are passive or active. However, many people are unsure of exactly what that difference entails. Difference between active and passive components One, what are passive components? Like resistors, transformers, and diodes don't need an external power source to function. These components use some other property to control the electrical signal. As a result, they only require the current traveling through the connected circuit. Resistors impede the flow of electrons without introducing more electricity into the system. Lossy or dissipative, these cannot absorb power from an external circuit. Resistors are an example of lossy passive components. Lossless, these do not have any input or output net level flow. A few examples of lossless components are inductors, transformers, and gyrators. What are active components? These components are parts of a circuit that rely on an external power source to control or modify electrical signals. Active components such as transistors and silicon-controlled rectifiers SCRs, use electricity to control electricity. Now that we understand about active and passive devices and their types, let's make a comparison between active and passive components based on their specific parameters. Active and passive components in electronics, while their superficial differences are easy to tell, their components contribute to a more fundamental assumption of electronic design. Energy conservation. Because energy cannot be created or destroyed, and real-world machines cannot operate at 100% efficiency, all real-world passive circuits will lose some amount of power in use. We witness this net loss through the decline in power between the input and output signals, and a decrease in amplification. In practical terms, active components are useful because they often enable a small amount of electricity to control a larger quantity. In other words, one of the major benefits of active devices like transistors, tunnel diodes, and vacuum tubes is that they allow amplification. Whether they influence the flow of electricity by using voltage or current as the control, active components allow a small input to generate a matching, larger output. Active components such as amplifiers, vacuum tubes, and transistors use an external power source to add power to a system. To be considered an electronic circuit, they must technically use one electrical signal to control another. We don't define circuits without active components as electronics, but in practice, virtually all electronic circuits have passive components as well. Passive components like resistors, inductors, and capacitors influence the flow of power, but do not require an external power source to function. You will likely find both kinds of components in every electronic device. Conclusion 
one source of energy. Active components require an extra source of energy. In the case of passive components, no extra source of energy is required for their operation. A resistor works on its own without the need for a specific voltage. 2. Energy Active components produce energy in the form of voltage or current, but passive components are those devices that store energy, like a capacitor, stores its energy in form of electric field, and an inductor stores its energy in form of a magnetic field. 3. Linearity Passive components are linear and active components are non-linear. Meaning in a passive component like a resistor, the voltage drop across will be linear to its resistance value according to Ohm's law. While in a transistor or other active component, the output will have an amplification factor that will not be linear. For power gain, Active components are capable of providing power gain, whereas in the case of passive components the ability to amplify power is not present. 5. Controlling the current. Active component as the name implies can easily control the flow of the current. The same task cannot be done by a passive component. 6. External source. Active components as seen earlier require an extra source to control and maintain its operations, but in the case of passive components, there is no requirement of an external source.